as I was traveling the world at 18 or 19 years old, my mother was getting ready to retire. And she said, okay, on this trip, if you find anywhere that you think I would love and would want to retire to, let me know. And I went to Seattle for the first time. I'd never been. Had an amazing experience. Found everything that I always imagined to have in a city. And called my mother and said, I think I found the place for you. It's Seattle. It's like an established punk rock band. I lied about my age. Did, 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 have you ever heard of Nirvana? Sure. This is ridiculous. There was some sort of movement. It was really impressionable. I went on to explain the people and the tempo of the city and the landscape and the geography and the food and the music and it seemed like Seattle didn't need anyone but Seattle and I liked that about it. The band that I was in from Virginia was like an established punk rock band that had toured Europe and America and stuff like that. And in those days, you know, you're touring in a van and you're just going from gig to gig, making enough to put gas in the tank and buy a salad. We had a way of making salads back then. It's called a bag salad, where you just get a head of lettuce, a carrot, and a cucumber, and you steal the salad dressing, and you mix it all up in the bag that it came in, and you just eat it with your hands. So the band fell apart in Los Angeles, and we were stranded um, in this house full of mud wrestlers. Some friends of mine who were from Seattle in a band called the Melvins, um, we're coming down to Los Angeles to play a gig, so I called them and said, just so you know, we're stuck here. Um, we'd love to come to the show. And the singer Buzz said, well, have you ever heard of Nirvana? And I said, of course. Nirvana had made a record that somehow successfully mixed classic rock and roll with dissonant punk rock, and it was brilliant. Buzz said, well, they're looking for a drummer and they came to see you play a few weeks ago. And they said, if we could get a drummer like that, that's the drummer that we need. And I knew that if I were the drummer of this band, that it would be good. I just knew it. But I didn't want to leave my friends behind that I had toured with for years. And they were like my brothers. And I called my mother and I said, I'm torn. I don't know what, what to do. And she said, you know, sometimes in life, you have to do what's best for you. She Western Union, $120, and I flew up to Seattle, and I never went back. I remember getting off the plane and Chris and Kurt meeting me at baggage claim. It was like having the children of the corn pick you up from the airport. When I came up to Seattle, Nirvana was doing a show with another drummer. I get there to this Nirvana show, there's about 1,200 people, and maybe 15 of them looked like they were punk rockers. The rest of them were trailer park kids with greasy long hair, wearing clothes that they bought at Fred Meyer or the Salvation Army. They were flannels, and I mean, I still dressed like the kids that I saw at that gig that night. It already felt like there was some sort of movement, but it was unintentional. And these people just gathered or were drawn to this thing because it just sounded like they felt. And the energy was different than anything I'd ever seen. That was my first day in Seattle. I went out and got drunk with all the guys in Nirvana. It was really fun. <laughs> I thought if I don't become a drummer, at least I have a story to tell. I think it's the first time I grilled octopus too. That was weird. Anyone who's spent more than one season in Seattle knows that there's practically one season in Seattle, you know? Those hard five or six months where you don't see sun, you retreat to places like basements or bars. Um, and in that, you develop these little communities. I talked to friends at home, and they'd say, what'd you do last night? Oh, I went and I shot pool with a guy from Alice in Chains, a dude from Pearl Jam, a guy from Soundgarden, and someone from Mud Honey. It's a big city with a little, little, little town vibe, small town vibe. Months went by where I didn't see the sun. Uh, it's really early in the morning. I think it's about 
8.30 or something, or 9, and I haven't been asleep yet. Kurt and I wouldn't go to sleep until 9 o'clock in the morning as the sun was coming up. And we'd wake up at 4 in the afternoon as it was going down in this tiny little apartment where I slept on a couch that's half as long as me with turtles in this aquarium that Kurt had built. I'm happy that I got to experience those few years in Seattle where the city just exploded. The experiences that I had at that age, which is a really impressionable age, shaped so much about the, what, the person that I am now. I was living with my buddy Barrett in this room in the back of the house knowing that I could have bought every house on the street, but I didn't want it to change, you know? I was in a band with the greatest songwriter of our generation, and all I had to do was play the drums like it was the last day of my life. So I did, every time. I had this coming of age incredible experience while I was there, and then probably the most devastating time of my life. After Kurt died, I couldn't even listen to music for months. No radio, no TV, nothing. I just couldn't stand the sound of music. I was scared of music. And then I realized that it was the one thing that was going to help me out of that place. Seattle's lost a lot of great talent. But in some ways, that loss has only strengthened our bond. When I go back to Seattle, I always rent a car and drive around to these places that I spent time. And I find myself driving slower when I get to the places that broke my heart because I still want it, I want that to stay with me. And all of those lessons that were learned at that time and all the things that I gained and all the things that I lost, I still feel it. It's still like in my veins, it, became this part of my DNA that serves as this divining rod wherever I go. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Seattle because it was the perfect place for a person like me. I wish Seattle would just take me back. <laughs> you know?